Coming up on 840 on News Talk Saga 960, Raw, Mike Richards, we're going to talk about hockey. Yes, hockey. And people are like, well, where? Where would this be? Well, if uh, you've been to Vermont this year behind the bench, normally uh, Todd Woodcroft, when we talked to him, he was an assistant coach with the Winnipeg Jets. He is now the head coach at the University of Vermont, which is, uh, I, I think it's a win-win for both. Although I, I'm sure that Todd will want to see more of the winning for the Catamounts in the upcoming seasons. But uh, I think it's just a great signing, a great opportunity for a great guy. And Todd Woodcroft joins us here this morning. How are you doing, Todd? Morning, gentlemen. How are you guys today? Well, we're, we're very – I was really excited when I heard uh, the signing. And, again, when you take a look at uh, 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 college sports and you look at uh, hockey, how it has just exploded. And this is for us uh, here in Canada where sometimes we're – a little bit unaware, I think, of what happens in in uh, in 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 collegiate uh, sports pertaining to hockey. And Vermont actually has, in terms of its athletic department, is is pretty solid. It's not uncommon for the Catamounts to go to uh, uh, a March Madness. That that, that uh, you know is it is a solid program. The hockey program sometimes up here we may not know a whole bunch. And I'm talking now the GTA, the Toronto area, unfamiliar. What is in that program like for you in taking the helm right now? Well, I'm walking into a spot that was left in a, in a great situation for me where the previous coach, a gentleman by the name of Kevin Snedden, had recruited some excellent character people. Like, so there's no issues in the locker room, which is a huge bonus for when a new coach comes in that sometimes you think, I don't know, there's, a, there's something wrong in the locker room. There could be some issues we have to resolve, but the locker room is awesome. So all we're going to be doing is just tweaking a little bit of the way that we play. We're going to empower these players in there inside the locker room to solve these problems themselves a lot of the times. It's there. The solutions are there inside this team. And then now it's about finding new players and recruiting new players. So, so many of those players are going to come from Southern Ontario, the Toronto area, all the way from Toronto through Ottawa. There's a great belt of people, a long tradition of uh, NCAA players coming from that area. Um, and then it's about mining talent all around the world, getting into places that maybe traditionally players haven't been found into a Europe. And now you're seeing young, uh, young, we're talking about men's hockey here, young men developing in, uh, you know, California, Florida, non-traditional markets, the Pacific Northwest, all these places are producing Las Vegas. These are places when we were young that people never thought about as, as hockey developing uh, markets, but now you're finding players coming out of all these places. Todd, uh, well, first off, formally congratulations on the position. I know we've talked before, but uh, I, I wanted to ask you, how did, how did it all come about? When did they start contacting you? Uh, when did you show interest in it? Uh, and obviously, this is a massive position, and, and, and we got, they got the right guy for the job, but how did it all come about? Because these aren't one of those things where, where it happens over the course of a day or two, and, and then you're like, yeah, I'll, I'll accept this position. Can you, can you take us through some yeah. of uh, that? Some of, some of the uh, benefits of a job uh, like working in a place like Winnipeg is that you're allowed and encouraged to do professional development. And, and one of those things that uh, Kevin Chevaldeoff and Mark Chipman and Paul Maurice always told us we could do as coaches was go and speak at coaching clinics around the world, whether it be IIHF or the coaches site or the NHL CA webinars, whatever they're doing, uh, they encourage us to do that. And, and, and last year I was asked to speak at uh, one for all the uh, college hockey coaches down in Florida. After we had been eliminated by St. Louis, they were looking for someone to come in and speak at their uh, like annual gathering they have in, in uh, Florida. So I went down and spoke at that and, I think my name kind of got put into the, uh, you know, the, the idea of maybe being a coach who would come into college hockey from there. there a few programs recently have hired people from the NHL. So you look at a, a great model would be UMass, uh, run by a, a great coach by the name of Greg Carville, who had exact same path that I had taken. And Greg Carville and I are friends. And they, they UMass went and recruited him. Uh, he had coached in college hockey previously, but... Uh, what they wanted was some NHL pedigree. So the process for me was when our season was over, they uh, reached out and asked if I would be interested in, in uh, you know, having my name in the hat on that. I, I, or my hat in the ring for that. I talked to uh, Paul Maurice and Kevin Sheldayoff, and uh, the AD called uh, Kevin Sheldayoff, and Kevin said, yeah, of course, you have permission to talk to him because there's a chain of command you have to follow there. And 
And I asked Paul, I said, what do you think? And Paul said, you know, I think it's a good thing if you go through this process, like every coach at some point wants to be a head coach. And, and if you have an opportunity to walk into a head coaching situation, like I'm walking into in Burlington, where it's just a great, great situation with an amazing fan base and a great vibrant city and, and a huge tradition of producing players. So now the challenge is they're looking at, at me specifically, they wanted a coach who had an NHL uh, history of developing players, a developmental bias to uh, look for players to play after their college career. So I went through the whole process and it was all like, you know, the COVID stuff made it uh, easier to do in one sense, but I didn't even go to campus. I haven't been to campus in probably eight years. Wow. Um, but everything was via Zoom, which probably helps me because, uh, you know, it's, I look, probably look a little bit better on screen than I do on <laughs> in real life. So that's what, that's what all went. The, the, the support from, uh, you know, the, the management group from Winnipeg was amazing. Paul was someone I leaned on throughout the whole process. Like, you know, he was typical. Paul was really funny and, you know, saying, make sure they don't call him because he's going to tell them about all my, you know, problems that I have in my life that he's going to make up <laughs> these situations. You know, I'm overdue library books and all these crazy things. But he was amazing, amazing through it and gave me great advice. And then finally, when uh, they offered me the job, it was a hard decision, but it was an easy decision because at the end of the day, I want to be a head coach and this gives me a great chance to do it. But to, to leave that organization, to leave that city and that coaching staff and players and equipment people and medical people, it, it was that was a real hard thing. I had a hard couple of days, to be honest. We're in conversation with Todd Woodcroft. He is now the head coach at the University of Vermont here on News Talk, Saga 960. Uh, looking, you're in the Hockey East. And so if anybody who's seen any of the uh, collegiate hockey in the Boston area, you find yourself with, so you got BC, UMass, UMass Lowell, then you, uh, Boston University, Northeastern. Uh, there's a lot of hockey being played in that area, and they are hockey crazy. I, I think uh, in the old Boston Garden, I think they had, uh, I think it was Robbie Fatork. Did they not have his jersey hung somewhere? And that was that was based on high school hockey. So I think sometimes in Canada, we assume that we have ownership of, of certain uh, areas of hockey that are only Canadian. Well, you probably haven't been down to see a lot of the hockey in that area because where you're sitting and, and the situation you're coming into, you've got a lot of big teams in front of you, which if – Look, you want to make a name for yourself. You want to be competitive. You want to be where it is competitive. In the Hockey East, you've got all of that and more. Well, there's 60 Division I programs, and, and now they're talking about adding one more in Long Island University. So college hockey is part of the fabric of American sports, which is so much different than, than Canadian sports. Uh, you know, I'm from Toronto, obviously, and, and it wasn't like we grew up and we're cheering for local university teams or college teams. Most of the kids in – in areas that play hockey at Minnesota or Michigan and for sure New England, those kids grow up idolizing the colleges. Like where I live in the office in Minnesota, young boys and girls grow up, want to play for the Gophers. That's their highest career goal. And it's an amazing goal to play for your local team, university, college that you've watched ever since you were a young boy or young girl. It's, it's kind of like in Europe with the uh, world championships, like in North America, we don't really have a grasp of how important the world championships are to other hockey cultures. For me, it's the same thing with uh, hockey and in, in college sports in America with that it being such a part of their culture and fabric and such a destination for these young players. And you have so many players inside D1 hockey that are now American, like 25 years ago, my older brother played at Colgate University in the late 80s and the 90s. And it was like 80% of the players playing in those teams were Canadian. Now it's shifted where you have, it's a small, such a small amount of Canadian players vying for those spots. And, you know, the developmental leagues of the USHL or the US national team, I mean, they're just producing players and putting them in these programs. And the coaches, like, like you talked about hockey East, like there's five or six coaches right now that I think are NHL worthy coaches in there. You know, Jerry York, like this guy's the coach K of hockey. Like, you know, so yeah. it, it's an amazing thing. It's, it's going to be a great challenge for me to go against those guys, but it's also a great thing for me because I'm going against those guys. And then it's the same thing for the players in the team. Like I think hockey East is arguably the best uh, conference in college hockey with all the teams that you mentioned and you know you got UNH in there you know, UConn like all these teams that are just so so good 
Yeah, and, and you're right. The NHL is recruiting even as recently as David Quinn with the New York Rangers, who has uh, his his hockey career was from that area. I was looking over your your schedule last year. So obviously the usual suspects: Maine, uh, Boston College, Boston University. You got some Ivy League schools on the schedule as well, like Yale and stuff like that. And then and then out of the blue, you got Arizona State. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, that's where I, I would mean, want to go. I mean, that's Why didn't where you get, I'd want to play, Todd. But <laughs> take I, Arizona, get, for God's sakes. <laughs> <laughs> how do you get that on the schedule, though? As far as determining, uh, is it is it like a random where where these schools will play? You know, cross country trips. Like you know, I I from Manitoba. A lot of our, uh, you know, uh, my, a lot of my friends played at UND and stuff like that because the yeah. Fighting Sioux at the time, Fighting Hawks now are a big foundation school as well. Uh, how, how does it get determined that, you know, you'll play Arizona State or maybe you'll play Denver, or, you know, because obviously they're a part of the conference itself. That, that's an excellent question because what, what happens is you have 34 games and, and inside your conference, it's like 24 of those are inside your conference. So Hockey East has 11 teams. It's hard to get a balanced schedule. So there's always a discussion about having what's called a balanced schedule where you play just each team inside your conference twice. So that would be 20 games, let's say, if you get 10 teams in there. Uh, and then you have to find the other games yourself. You're actually, you're actually reaching out to teams and trying to get them to come to you or you go to them. And two, three years down the road, you're making – uh, not deals isn't the right word for it, but you're making agreements where, okay, we're going to go to Arizona state last year, which stinks for me because I don't get to go to Arizona in the middle of the winter, but <laughs> now they, now they come to, to, to UVM this year. So um, what's going to be interesting would be what's going to happen with all the COVID budget cuts. Like, you know, and if teams are going to have, yes. you know, do they want their athletes to fly and like so you might see some schedule changes you might see holes in teams uh you know teams trying to find new partners to play against and, and that that's a, something that I'm learning about too like we have an amazing um staff there where they have been scheduling these games two three years out and it's you know luckily for me I'm not walking in having to call up coaches and saying hey do you want to come to you know Burlington Vermont in December you know, let's all just go to Arizona. That'd be a nice one. <laughs> well, also too, uh, you know, because of uh, COVID when it came to the football question. So I look at like the big 10. So every single school there has a massive football program. Uh, you know, if you're a div two, div three, depending on what your school is uh, tied to that football program, football makes the money. Football is the money maker south of the border. So you start taking, you know, people wondering, are you going to have football this season? You take those football programs out, there are other programs who are just going to get cut because there's just not going to be the money. So I imagine with a lot of the collegiate sports and all the different sports, whether football plays or doesn't play has a massive impact on, on the entire school and all their programs. Well, for, for sure. I mean, the, the absolute first thing that's becoming apparent here is that everything I've learned from the NCAA is that the health of the student athletes and the students in general, that's paramount. That's more important than any of the sports. It's more important than any, uh, you know, money coming in from college football or basketball or hockey or whatever. At UVM, hockey and basketball are the two um, most, uh, I'd say, popular sports in the sense that they get so much support from the community. Uh, the state of Vermont, there are no professional teams in, in the state of Vermont. So UVM basketball, which is a really good program, coached by an unbelievable coach named John Becker, who's done a great job and has an amazing record. Uh, and then you have the you have the hockey team, and those are kind of the two uh, pillars of the athletic community there. But they have so many other sports that are, you know, from representative of men's and women's teams, and they're all affected. Every one of them is affected, and, and whether it's you know lacrosse or whether it's tennis or anything, it could if, what if it's male or female, it doesn't matter. Everybody's going to be feeling a pinch here, and I think that's across all of college sports but what I've been really proud to see is that the absolute first thing that gets talked about is the health and even the mental well-being of the athletes like the resources available and encouraged now so from our department having people reach out to me and saying what what do your players need they need somebody to talk to we have the resources for them they are first and that to me is an amazing indication of an institution that you're walking into 
Well, I happen to think this institution uh, got a little bit lucky getting you available, uh, Todd. I think it's a I think it's a win win for both, not only where you are and want to go and where you're going to be, but also I think lifting up a program uh, that really needs it. But with a guy who's got all the uh, right tools, and for them, I think that uh, again, I, I see both sides winning. And on top of that, you're you're young enough looking that. You know, you could walk on campus. Maybe you'll do okay. I don't know. I'm just throwing. I'm just throwing. <laughs> You're gonna think it's a wig. That's what I keep telling everybody. <laughs> I'm almost like the Lego in the back of Dave's house. There, I'm just gonna take this thing off. <laughs> I'm gonna get a, like a ponytail, or I'm gonna get like a. You know, like a hair or something. I don't know. Well, you're going to do great, and uh, we look forward to uh, keeping up with you and seeing how you're doing as as it progresses. But uh, I'm really happy for you because this is a this is a great move, and I'm sure it's going to play out just brilliantly in uh, sort of the trajectory of where the Woodcroft uh, ship is going. I think this is going to work out just uh, fantastic for you. Thanks, gentlemen. Thank you very much for having me on. Thank you. Todd Woodcroft, the head coach of the University of Vermont, joining us here this morning, and uh, a great job. And he will do a great job. And as he talked about, just the uh, level of hockey. Uh, south of the border collegiately is uh it's really off the charts all you have to do is you know occasionally tsn will will pick up some of the tournaments they'll pick up the you know the frozen four they usually do but even i think it's called the bean pot which i believe is uh boston college and boston university i believe um and the, the hockey as i said they don't dream about junior hockey and those kinds of programs if you're in the states then you're from minnesota for instance do you do you think about being a golden golfer that's just kind of Kind of how it is. So uh, good for Todd. He'll do great. It is 8.55. We do traffic 